and gents, and welcome back to the Beyond Retro Podcast. I am Nathan Kennedy, and I'm here with new look Joe Motto. He's been inspired. Joe, tell us about I'm thinking tell I, us about this mask. Yeah, this this mask. Uh, you know, well, you know how I have my Modulock mask. So when I was at the store, I was looking for something similar to that. Not saying this is replacing what I would do on Fans of Power, but I was like, you know, something inspired, red, get some white teeth on it, has the black kind of hood, can still do the scarf. I was like. It still works, so this would be the mask I use for Beyond Retro. Don't think I'll use it for fans of power, but uh, I don't know if I ever tried some different modifications, maybe. But I think it works good, and I can breathe. Yeah, I can breathe. You can see the eyes a little and, bit, and it, it seems like it works. Yeah, and if you sweat in it, it's not going to like just deteriorate and fall apart. Right, it ain't going to deteriorate. And the other thing is how this mask is with like this like foam that they put like right here on the it head and around the has jaw. A separation. Yeah, it separates, so it's not just sweat pouring onto my head and everything from the mask. It's it, it, can, it can breathe, so that's why I wanted the eye holes, because I was thinking, should I cover the eye holes? But I was like, well, if I do that, then it's just going to keep all the heat inside, so and, and, this and works. And people can see your eyes, and now that I'm kind of looking at it, it's almost like we have the same eyes. Same, co- see, like, could same be. color and everything. <laughs> Long lost cousins, you always said, the crazy same kind of hair, you know, it's a possibility. Mm. That, that that well uh, to be fair i don't really know what joe's hair looks like now I, he just knows it's like a dirty blonde brown uh, uh yeah that's pretty much uh, you it. know what i'll just contact uh one of the cashiers at the hot topic in parts unknown see um, and show there you go you can do it yeah i'll be like can we'll get a sketch artist and <laughs> i'll be like just fill this out and there we go and i'll post could you mention the sketch artist draws the modulock mask but with hair it's like still even with the sketch artist you're not getting anything so but the I, mask I, but I, with there hair. you go ladies he doesn't take the mask off even even <laughs> for that everything else is off but the mask stays gotta keep the mask on so. but um well this episode well we're gonna be talking about a movie that for me now this is what i was gonna ask you i was hoping maybe you'd know the answer to I remember waiting for this movie, like, for a year or two, thinking, oh, man, it's going to come to theater, going to come to theater. And then it was, like, never happened. And I was like, is this movie just canceled? And then all of a sudden, one day, I can't remember if I was at the store, it was just there on DVD. And I was like, well, what happened to the theater or the theatrical, you know, release? Do you know what happened with that? Why I, never I, would, I would imagine that that's a case of a very, very limited theatrical run. Uh, for me, with the, the film, it was kind of finding out about it on the the movie websites that I would frequent at the time. I think this came out in 07 so or 08 ish somewhere in that that time frame. So I was uh, a a frequent visitor of joblow.com. That was to me that was like the the go to for that and it was always uh here's the writer from uh X-Men 2 and uh Superman Returns and uh, Brian Singer's producing it. It's going to be this anthology film. I was like, all right, yeah. Like I, I could, I've always dug anthology films. So uh, I, it was kind of like you, but at the same time, uh, I knew when the DVD was coming out. And at the time, I was uh, a pirate. So uh, <sighs> anytime that would happen a good two weeks before its release, it would show up on the site. So I, I gave it a download, gave it a watch, fell in love with it, and went and got the, the DVD. And I want to apologize to all of the, the viewers and listeners when this goes out on Podbean if I sound a little stuffy. Uh, yesterday, I went out and mowed the yard, and the grass is like kind of half dead, but it's got some, some tall spots in the grass. And... Not to mention, we went basically from 90 degree weather, and yesterday it was only like 62 degrees. Yeah, sure. Did. Around here too, ups and downs. So yeah. I think it, yeah. I think it's kind of like messing with the stuff. And I woke up like an an hour ago, uh, so apologies if I sound really stuffy. But uh, you sound fine. So with you, it was just expectation. Then you just walk in the store, and there's the the DVD. You're like, oh shit, it's yeah. Just- yeah, because I was thinking, all right, they've been, you know, hyping about this new movie, Trick or Treat. I was like, it looks pretty cool. You know, we haven't seen a good kind of like Halloween-ish, scary, whatever kind of – I don't even know what the real vibe was. I just remember kind of the previews. They get talking about it coming to theaters, and then it was just never happening. And then one day it just, bam, popped up. And well, when I got this movie and I seen it for the first time, I'm just glad all my expectations were met 
it's it's a movie that it's I wouldn't say underrated. It's a movie that no one really knows well, about because, like I said, I think if it yeah you know if it went to the theaters, it would have I think got so much more exposure because all you see is there's a lot of cult stuff for this movie, and you know they, they have a lot of merchandise trying to finally get some more figures out yeah. because that little Sam figure looks cool as yeah. hell, but it's. There's a good cult for it, but I just I feel like if more people seen this movie, they'd fall in love with it. They did a great job. But I mean, I'll pass it back to you. But I love this movie. I, it's it, uh, it's a double edged sword for me. Like, had it got a, a wide release, and at the time would have been, uh, I mean, obviously would have been enjoyed by the masses. Then, mm-hmm. had it reached that popularity, then then I, I maybe I wouldn't have liked it as much then. Because I, I what do you think? Well, I well, I'm just like I, I'm kind of that kind of person. Like, if something falls under the radar and I'm there to check it out, I'm like, oh, you know, I, I feel like a part of this little special group. But if it's just like a mainstream, massive release and everyone's talking about it and there's merchandise everywhere, it it it's a little off putting sometimes. You feel like it's too much exposure and loses its appeal or something or uh, something like that. In, or... in in certain cases, but this I don't think that 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 would have happened. But uh, it, it's cool to think because it, it did kind of start that way, and I feel like it's just now starting to reach more people. Oddly enough, because yeah, like over ten years later, it's bizarre. Yeah, yeah. because I went into a, a Spirit Halloween and they had like Sam's outfit. Uh, the sucker like a prop and an actual (laughs) sucker uh outside decorations and i'm like oh this is cool it's nice to finally see this character get some more exposure but i think at the time especially because this came out 12 years ago i think at the time i would have been uh a little more oh well everybody likes it so like it's just okay i i hate that i think definitely we would have probably had a sequel by then because i yeah. think they've been talking about the sequel for so many years but then it makes you wonder okay let's say it did come out and hit the theaters and bam was a super hit and then they made another one and another one then it started getting watered down yeah. so then so, like the whole you know like yeah i know what you so mean. It, it it's probably better off the, the way that it was and you know the director went on to do krampus which i thought was a fantastic ho- oh, yeah. holiday themed yeah, like uh film and then actually got to do godzilla king of the monsters which was uh, all right, I, not uh... no, no, that was fine too. But I, I'd hope they can finally get back to at least doing a sequel for this, because uh, uh, you know this one. It's one of those stories again. It's it's like not like separate. If it's it's separate, but still yes. the same meaning. They kind of start interlocking, and that's what I liked. Is once as you watch it, you see how this connected to this part and this part. Mm-hmm. I love the new character because you know after I seen that, and then I seen that little uh, cartoon short. I don't know if it was called Seasons Greetings. Yeah. If that was the little cartoon, fe- yeah, featuring Sam, and I think that was supposed to be what was first or his first thing into it. But hearing how he wanted to create, you know, a kind of like, in a way, a mascot for Halloween. He said, you know, Halloween, yes, we're known for always the scary characters. You know, if you could say Frankenstein, Dracula, blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. But there's never been an official, real mascot, kind of, in a way, for uh, Halloween. But he said he started noticing it always seemed like there was, like, pumpkin-type characters, and he came up with the idea of Sam. But, yeah, because Sam, as you've seen in this movie, uh, it's not, you know, because I wonder, well, what is his main role? Is he just and then obviously he just must be the spirit or essence of Halloween and you got to follow the rules right otherwise he's going to intervene but I'll pass it back to you but just a good ass well I think when when I was watching it I, I was kind of like well is this uh, is this a kid and we're going to say right now if you have not watched this spoilers ahead I mean the movie's 12 years old oh, yeah. you probably I'd hope you would have seen, seen it hopefully seen but it. if you've not seen it uh, go check it out and then and come back and watch this because spoiler heavy so here we go I always thought, uh, at, well, uh, on the, the first viewing, I was like, well, damn, this little kid's kind of crazy. But as it turns out, it's like uh, like a, just, uh, what what would you even say? Like, it's not really. I'd say like a demon. It is. Yeah. It's just like some kind of demonic monster, almost, the, you know, like we said, a spirit of Halloween. Because, yeah, when that mask, when that burlap sack comes off and you see what's there, yes, that's freaky. Because I did. I thought it was just a little kid because yeah he looks like a little yeah. kid and go you know trick-or-treating and and you know it's it's some of the subtle things that i guess the first time i seen it i didn't pay attention then i watched it again with the volume up like i think when he was dragging his like little sack i thought i heard a cat meowing in the bag am i right in saying that or no mm. I, I honestly i'm not sure 
Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but uh, when you were saying if you don't follow in, in the spirit of Halloween, then Sam will intervene, and uh, that's kind of established at the beginning of the film when this young couple's walking home, and they're, they're kind of drunk, and dude's like, all right, yeah, and she's like, can we take these down now? Halloween's over. He's like, you got you got to leave them up. And then he's all kind of disappointed because I think he's he's wanting some sex, and she's like, "Go put the tape on." And while he yeah, what? and she she blew or remember yeah because she didn't he didn't want her to blow out the the candles yep. on the jack o' lantern and, 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 that's and, and yeah that's kind of how you get introduced to Sam as we're seeing from his perspective looking on. She blows out the the candle and the pumpkin. You hear an audible gasp, and uh, she's starting to tear the shit down. And uh, I think. It, you don't even see the kill, but it, it's just, it, it's really... Just quickly, like, within the sheets, it looks crazy. You don't know what's yeah. going on, but it, you get what's going on. Yeah, 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 so, like, he, he jumps on her, and, and they're fighting, and we got, like, the uh, the sheet on top of him. These kids are just walking up, and then he pulls out that, that sucker that's got a bite into it and just slits her throat. It's great. And the kids just scatter <laughs> yeah, and run away. Yeah, because when they went up, I, I, I can't remember, yeah, all they seen were sheets around and everything, yeah. and you're right, then they're seeing some blood, and they, yeah, they're out of there. The boyfriend comes out and then starts taking off all the sheets, and there's his, his wife up there, and then he gets it too, but uh, yeah, you're right, it starts, when it starts going from one story to another, I like kind of the, the twists mm-hmm. of the things, because... uh what was the next story the one with the the girls then that you know you're thinking that the girl they're talking about it's going to be her first time yeah. she's going to this party and get to get yeah oh, okay. and, and they're they're in the the changing room and the little kids trying to like get a peek and see some titties hopefully which which we didn't which that that, w- right. that would have been cool but uh well so get to see something later though, yeah and, and then the, that mom is just like you guys need to watch what you're saying and doing and blah 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 and they're they're all laughing but it's uh at the time i had a pretty big crush on anna paquin because i I I liked her as as rogue uh i i saw some scenes from true blood i never watched the show but i saw the important bits at least for for me (laughs) anyway so i always had a crush on but hey her her friends are pretty good looking too Oh yeah, all of them, all of but them. But it, it, there is, and I think that's what I appreciate the most about this is all the stories intertwine. But not only that, they give a lot of misdirection. Like you think it's going one way, you hear this part of like, oh yeah, well, it's my first time, and oh, well, you just got to find the right one, and all that, and you, and you uh-huh. just it, yes, because you're, mm-hmm. and you just assume that it's like she wants to find like a, a a good date and you see like the other girls just hitting on like the tv crew the camera guys it's uh-huh. like hey you want to do it? oh yeah uh, in in most cases because yeah. dude dudes are dumb it's that simple it can be anyway yeah yeah so you are you're just thinking the whole simple story of it's she's gonna lose her virginity it's it's gonna happen at some kind of halloween party but then in between this it cuts to another scene where you see the kid going down the street and he's knocking all the jack-o'-lanterns down. He's, you know, taking candy and he goes up to the one house of this one guy who's, it's his principal, right? Yeah. Is it the yeah, principal? Yeah, he, he's the, yeah. yeah, he's his principal and he's talking about, hey, and you shouldn't do this shit. And the kid's just like, oh, he's whatever. He's giving the rules. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I like because they're telling everybody, if you kind of look, it seemed like from the most part, was kind of telling a story about, you know, things you should follow and traditions of Halloween. And, and as the one kid sitting there next to his principal eating, he starts feeling like, oh, something wrong with you? And then the kid starts puking uh, up and just puking up all sorts. It, it looked gross. I almost thought it was like blood and chocolate. And but it sounded it like, gross, too. They, it they, did. They made real gross. Yeah. Stuff. Whoever, whoever uh, mixed the audio or did the certain tricks to make it sound nastier did a fantastic job because it, it just... Yeah, that was... It was it was nasty, but that guy said, and you should always remember the other thing. Remember, always check your candy. And then this guy turns out to be like a, a murderer, a kind of a nutcase, yeah. and he's somebody that likes to, you know, kill kids or people. And, we, and you hear and the thing. What was you? I gonna was going to say, which leads to one of my favorite parts of the film when he's actually burying, like throwing him in a hole in the backyard with the other bodies, and his son pops out of the window, and he's like, "Billy, you got to be quiet." And he's like. 
I want to go trick or treating. And he's like, uh, oh, just shut up. Go watch like Charlie Brown. And he's like, Charlie Brown's an asshole. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love, I love my damn Charlie Brown. But yeah, but I do like that because he keeps wanting to talk about, you know, carving the jack o' lantern and help me with the eyes. And and his dad, he says he has to do something later, like go to a party. Mm-hmm. But finally, get yeah, and there's a scene with a neighbor and a dog. So even that connects later at the end, which I always like seeing it from the other side. Spike, you know what I mean? It's get back in here, Spike. What it, are you doing? It's like, genius. Taking I, shit. This whole this whole <laughs> it's great. I tell you, the whole movie's genius. But I like how it got to a quick to where they show um the father go inside mm-hmm. and you know, and then the son scares him with the mask. And then, you know, he's like, we're going to carve the jack-o'-lantern. So they're going down or, or carve, they're carving something. They got to carve. I couldn't remember if he said jack-o'-lantern. He yeah. might have said carve whatever. And he's got to help with the eyes. So they're going downstairs. You see the father with a knife yep. in the back of him. And you're just like, oh, yeah, like, oh, shit. Yeah. And I thought he did because he raised up and then clump. And you heard that nasty sound. He pulls it up and there's blood. And then it ends up that he cut the head off of that one kid yeah. that, you know, he poisoned with the chocolate. And so his son's going to be a little lunatic, too. Which you, you kind of get a hint of later on, which I hope if they do follow through eventually and do a sequel that they continue his story. But even before he goes back in, when we had the establishment of the neighbor and the dog, there's the scene where he's at the window saying, like, oh, help me. And he's like, screw you. And then and you're like, well, what the hell's that about? And then it comes back. And you couldn't even really hear it, right? Yeah. Wasn't no, it yeah, kind of like muffled? muffled. You just yeah, you just see it. him like doing that. But it, it, and then something hits him. Yeah, but it, it's it's cool how it comes back to that. And also funny how he, uh, I, another kid's not dead in that hole. And he has to end up killing mm-hmm. it. And he cuts the finger off and throws it to the dog to get the dog to shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, right. The, uh, I I think, well, before I go into probably my favorite segment overall of the whole thing. You're probably going to like the part with the kids and the bus. Let's, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about the, uh, always checking your candy and stuff. Cause Joe, you are a tad, a smidge older than me. So yes, we, we definitely did check our candy at all times. Like after we're done trick or treating. Parents would sit there, we'd dump the bag on the table, and they'd inspect, like, all the pieces. And if there was a wrapper that looked a little funny, yeah. we threw it away. We always were usually pretty guaranteed on the candy bars, but we did look to see if there was any holes. Because, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I never know if there was actually any truth. Because where I grew up, I never heard anything on the news. Yeah. But how the news would say stuff in other states, they made it sound like bad stuff. And when you remember in Halloween, too, with the kid with the candy, I mean, with the apple and the razor blade in his mouth. Yeah. You know, you were paranoid. So, yes, we did inspect candy. I mean, my parents did, too. And for me, it was always like uh, if it wasn't a brand either, like if it was something that was just unmarked. Because, you know, like the orange and black, the what do they call them? Is it Mary Jane's or what? It's like the, the, Those... the peanut butter. Like they're actually all right. They're not bad. But I would always probably just toss those because I'm like, I don't know. Um, and the popcorn balls. If we ever yeah. got those, we never took homemade stuff. No, we threw that yeah, stuff away. Yeah, no, no, no homemade stuff. But were there any, were there any close calls or any like bad nope. trick or treating experiences? No, all the trick or treat, every trick or treating experience was just great. It was, but you know, even, it was like said, just yeah. even even last year, Joe. Because uh, if you guys haven't gone back and checked our back catalog of our other podcasts and shows. Uh, some of you may not know that Joe still goes trick-or-treating. Hey, I'm just saying, if you can get free candy, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just saying, you go out there and get it. Well, th- this year I'm going to do the same thing. It's just go quick. You go to the neighborhood. Nobody's going to know. You got a mask on. You run up there. Cheeky cheat. Say a voice like that and get your candy. What's wrong with that? Uh, there ain't nothing wrong. Joe, it's... it's real. All right, so uh, I... I, I I guess we can all assume because I think Joe alluded to at one point that he is, I guess, maybe not super tall, so he might be just short enough and using the voice that he passes off as the like the voice, the hunching over, it, it can work perfectly. You hunch over it too, so they're probably like, "Oh man, I feel so get... sorry for him." But that, well, you got to get into the role that you're doing, and plus, geez, like I said, those kids around here, you get some big six foot five suckers oh, that are still, you know, cheating about fourteen God. years old, so. 
Yeah, don't is, matter. Is, is, anyone, is anyone smart to it? I'm sure it's just around the neighborhood no. now. They're probably like, there's that fucking Amato again, just still trick or treat. <laughs> not when you're not when you're putting out an outfit, man. But like I said, anything for free. Oh, by the way, went over to Kroger the other day, and they have a clearance section. And you know those six packs of Hershey bars that you can, you know, get. And those are usually about three forty or four bucks or whatever. That six pack of big, and I'm talking about regular size Hershey bars, was a buck. And I was like, my God, I got, so I bought at least eight. So I got forty eight candy bars. Here's the reason: it's because on the outside of the package, it says, you know. Make these with s'mores, or use these to make s'mores. And they had a big display where they were having the graham crackers, the Hershey bars, and the marshmallows. And obviously, they got so many in that display, they couldn't sell it all. So it's not like they're old, but because it's using the advertisement of s'mores, it kind of would look old. So So, so you're you're benefiting from it being a a seasonal item. There. That's it. Uh, I I still can't get over the fact that you still go trick or treating. Oh, I love it. You do it. Go ahead. You and Emily do it this no. year. Just put on a mask. Go out no, there, have someone uh, get some food. Send me the candy. I'll take I, it. I, I'm Joe. I'm good. Plus, uh, trick or treating around in this area has changed so much. It, it's not. It's not so much uh, going around the neighborhood on the day of Halloween. It's always like the Saturday before, the Saturday after, and it's like the trunk or treats where it's like there's just cars on the parking Uh, lot. And I'm like, there's no fun in that. Like when I I was a kid, it it was exactly what you think it would be. And at the time, the neighborhood that we lived in, it was just a vast array of houses, a safe neighborhood that I I can recall. There's probably some weirdos out there. But... I I feel bad for today's generation because I feel like most places now don't have the traditional. I mean, we would like to give out candy, but it, it seems like Halloween is always on a weekday, and we both work. So I've noticed weird things. You're right. There's some areas, like even around here where I live, there's certain parts of the state that do it on a Friday yeah. or a Saturday, like the day before or after. But here, to where I'm at right now, and always been. It's always still been on Halloween, so thankfully we still at least that, have the tradition. And, it's and, just on Halloween. And that's fantastic. I think the only time it ever changes around here is if Halloween happens to fall on a Sunday, and they're like, oh, we can't have this. This is a demonic day. And I'm like, come on. Like, what? I, I, I'll be honest. I don't know. I thought if it was Sunday here. Thank God we're still Sunday, but it's weird. You're yeah. right. I guess different places, but yeah. You know. Well, hey, for as for candy, though, like, yeah, I wouldn't expect you and Emily to go getting candy for me. But if you could talk her into making some of them Jason hockey masks and send them to me for them cookies, I'll sit there and review them live on the show. I'll eat them and uh, I sure would like I, them. I, it's hilarious because it, uh, we did this last year sending them cookies. And Joe's, I was like, Joe, like, by the time they get to you, oh, these, these things are going to be, like, days old. I don't care. <laughs> they were great. <sighs> Jesus, yeah. I was tearing into that one right there live, I think, on the show. I can't remember if it was the chocolate chip ones that she did, and I was going to town on those. So, yeah, I did enjoy some cookies. Oh, my God. Well, um, yeah, back to the <clears throat> the show. Well, you so, know uh, what? You, yes. you should just go get a P.O. box, and we'll just put the link down below on every episode. And it's like, hey, if you want to send Joe some baked goods or, you know, uh, some more insects for him to eat live on air. It doesn't take much it. to please me. But I, like I said, I, I, I enjoy every little bit. It don't take a lot to please me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so the next uh, one of the stories is then it goes to uh, Rhonda. And it's it's a group of younger kids who are gathering uh, jack-o'-lanterns. Mm-hmm. And they eventually uh, go up to the house of one girl that they call a mean name, which I'm not going to repeat. Well, they, but, they uh, said that she's an idiot savant, which... Yeah, I mean, but they called her, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, Rhonda yeah. the something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, But we won't say that. But anyway, so this girl, though, she is very smart, and she knows the traditions of Halloween. Mm-hmm. So, but I'll let you lead into the part, because this, yeah, that had to be my favorite part of the story, too, is this story arc. I liked it. Yeah, so they're, they're collecting these jack-o'-lanterns because it leads into the story of they're going to basically honor the dead. And what it turns out is... There were, way back in the day, because that's how all these stories start, there were uh, some special needs kids and uh, their bus driver and the, the, the parents decided that they were tired of 
raising these kids. So they paid the bus driver off, and it's like, hey, if you can just go this other way and run that bus off a cliff, uh, go ahead and do it. And Off some crazy rock quarry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it leads to I what I'm assuming was like Halloween, either Halloween day or like, you know, celebrating Halloween that day at school, and they're all in costume. Yeah, because they were all in outfits. The kids were all in outfits. Which are, are yeah. fantastic, and also older costumes – Look mm-hmm. pretty creepy, looking back on them yeah, now. I like the Dracula one. Yeah. I think I used to have that Dracula or something similar to it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as the the bus driver's going, one of the kids picks up on the vibe and is like, "Wrong way, wrong way." Yeah, because you notice the kid. He was saying every house number when he went yeah. by. He knows the order of them, and then when it went the wrong way, he knew it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they they get to the point. He gets up and God, they're like chained to the seat. I don't know if this was just mm-hmm. a special case scenario or is it, this is something that they always did to these kids every day on the bus. Yeah, I was wondering um, too, but maybe it was a special I, I, case I was for I'm hoping it was time. just for this instance, I guess. But uh, yeah, yeah. So the bus driver's going and checking, making sure that they're locked, giving them a piece of candy. And uh, the, the, the kid that was counting said wrong way was actually like a, kind of free enough that broke away. And by the time the bus driver's in the back, he's at the steering wheel because he just wants to go home and runs everybody off the cliff, bus driver included. So uh, they, which I'm just like, all right, so uh, I think it was sort of a construction site. It would have to be to have that elevator right there to, to go down. So they go down, they had the jack-o'-lanterns there and basically, Oh, wait, wait, real quick. Yeah. W- w- one quick thing is like you said, they drove, you know, off the cliff. That's how the story went. And then you heard them say that the bus driver's body was never mm-hmm. found though. Yeah. They, they made a point so, to say that they, they, but they didn't really find the kids either. Did they? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. You did. Yeah, I don't know if they really explain. You would assume it how she said right. it, but then they made it sound like, oh, but the bus sank so deep that nobody could ever find it. See, you're right. There was kind of yeah. little conflicting parts, but they did want to specify bus driver's body never yes. found. Uh, so totally. so they get down there, and, and basically what this turns into is just a mean prank to, to play on, on this girl. On Rhonda, yeah. 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 And... Uh, <laughs> It, it's my favorite part because you kind of get an idea of where this is going just based off of how they tell this story and everything. So they scared. Th- oh, wait, real quick. One more. And not to cut you off, but when they go up to her house, remember all those beautifully uh, yes. carved pumpkins and like, she's the one that, you know, did them. She's great at doing it. So she takes her own special pumpkin, which, you know, you have to have all these jack-o'-lanterns lit, but okay. Now I'll pass well, it and, you. and you think about uh, the dynamics of their friends. So we got like the bitchy girl who obviously sets us up. Uh, you got the, the, the mm-hmm. good looking kid who is basically going to kind of be the bait, but feels kind of bad. And then you got mm-hmm. like the two lackey friends that, they hang out yeah. with and tolerate, but they're kind of treated like shit too. So they they scare they scare her. They are in costume. They're coming out of the the water and everything. And it's like, oh, it's just a act like they're the kids that died yeah. there. Yeah, and they're like, oh, it's 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 just a prank. We're we're just messing. And then that's when shit starts to go awry. And uh, yeah, that's when the the kids really do come back, and everybody was like blowing out their jack o' lantern thing. And Rhonda, you know, is getting back in that elevator that you have to have a key for and push a button mm-hmm. to go. And as she's in that, and you see the other uh, kids coming, like that one girl got caught by the chain. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of cool, yeah. and she got you know yanked back. But uh, you know, the one boy's up there; he's right in front, of, like you know, like you know, open it, up, open it up. And you see the uh, Rhonda reach for the key. She starts going. But then she hits the up button, like, see you later. And she goes up, like, all right, now you're going to get it. But she honored the dead, and she kept her jack-o'-lantern lit the whole time, never blew it yep. out. And I like how it, what, what the cool thing is almost like a, a, it shows respect the rules of Halloween. You're going to be okay because when she came to the top and was back up and got out of there taking her, like, a uh, little wagon with the pumpkin, you see Sam standing over there on the other side, and he's just looking at her. And she looked at him. But it was respect, and they walked past each other yeah. because she followed the rules. She didn't get killed. I love yep. it. He's like, now I got to go watch some other stuff. But I do like you hear the kids like screaming, and then you can just hear them getting like torn apart. Such good uh, yeah. uh, sound mixing and 
would, what would you call that sound design? I guess that's what they call it in, yeah, in yeah. the industry sound design, but no, uh, nice, crunchy, crunchy sounds. And then this is when everything else starts to really intertwine within each other. We kind of go back to, uh, uh, the girls and their party and, uh, Anna Paquin's character decides she's going to stay back and, and find her man. And we see this uh, Phantom of the Opera-esque looking guy who is like... With some things. With, with some things, which you find out because he's yeah. like making out with this chick and then she's like, what the hell? And it's like blood running down her and then like he's chasing her and it, he's got fangs. So you're like, all right, uh, vampire, I, I, I guess. So uh-huh. then he, uh-huh. he starts following uh, Anna Paquin and that little red riding hood by the yes. way that's what she's dressed yes. as little red, yeah. and they have some interaction and uh that shit goes awry because he uh ends up basically and i like the reveal of that too because he he's like laying there like beat up and everything, and he's looking around. Doesn't he fall out of a yeah. tree or something crazy? Like, oh, yeah, because that's the thing. That's the twist is, you know, he's he's with her, and then he, like, bites into her. You're seeing this blood. You see, oh, oh God, you know, she she got it. And then, but you see, like, when they're back at that party with all the girls and everything, which, by the way, the one girl was her sister, the other yeah. one. And, you know, like, they not really picked on her, but they called, like, Anna Paquin's character. They said, yeah, Mom always considered her the runt, the runt of, the litter. of the litter. And you're like, oh, yeah, the runt oh of the litter. okay. It's, it's all, so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Run of the litter. She's dressed as Little Red Riding Hood. She's getting bit. But then when that person falls out, you see, oh, my God, it's the guy that looked like the Phantom of the well, Opera. Well, they, they make it allude and, to thinking that it's her because that red... Yes. Tape and everything. Yeah, wrapped in red, and it ended up being him. And then that one girl comes up and looks and starts like pulling his mouth open. You see his sharp teeth, and she pulls him out. They were just phony yeah. teeth. And then when they revealed the face, it's that damn crazy ass principal. So like he got his. But the thing, the big twist of all this was, yeah, it's it's uh Little Red Riding Hood's you know first time, but it's not like for sex. It's her first kill because this is a pack of werewolves. I love that twist that they're werewolves and not vampires or whatever, and they're shedding, ripping off their skin yeah. to reveal the werewolves. And then and then she even has that eye, the line that he said to her, her earlier, I think, you know, like, what big eyes you yeah. have. So it's perfect little werewolf, Little Red Riding Hood thing. Yeah, I like that part a lot. Yeah, uh, the, the CG was a bit spotty on, on the transformation, but uh, that's an easily forgivable offense yeah. For, that is forgivable yeah. yeah yeah and uh so yeah after that that it kind of uh takes us right into then it says then it says earlier after then it says earlier yeah. so then you know you're doing a flashback yeah, yeah. so yeah, we right. we get back to the guy yelling at his dog in the backyard and uh that was the the good twist turns out the the bus driver made it out after all but, yeah, that was him. but he's a he's a grumpy ass old man now, and uh, yep, doesn't respect and hates Halloween and is exactly one of them grumpy people. It, but yeah, then you're seeing like you said everything from then his perspective. Like when you're hearing like first him yelling at the principal neighbor, but now you see him as he's doing the yelling. So in your memory, he's like, "Tell your kid to stay out of my yard," which the kid ended up being Sam. But yeah, Sam. He saved him finally, so Sam finally got to see some action. So this is the one guy that really didn't respect Halloween and really did something bad years ago. Because even that old man was sitting there trying to burn off for whatever reason. This was his day to decide to burn all these photos, which it was photos of him when he was younger and like with those kids by the bus. Yeah, and it's at this point I'm kind of wondering what the direction is going to be with Sam because I'm on one hand you're. The entire time, I'm like, well, what's under the mask? Because is this a kid? Because any time Sam would make noises, especially that first kill at the, the beginning, it sounds like a kid. So I'm like, well, what's what's going to go on here? And they, they fight, and the, the mask comes off and reveals just like this. It reminded me a lot of, like, Pumpkinhead. Like, the design. Yeah, he was... Yeah, for, and I like seeing, like you said, the supernatural kind of elements, like him crawling up on the walls and stuff. You see, yeah, this is uh, not just a normal kid. It's a supernatural evil of Halloween. And I'm trying to remember. See, this is the part because I couldn't remember how exactly it began. Did Sam go up to that old man's house to trick-or-treat yes. at any point or not? I, and he didn't get nothing, correct? I think so. 
Okay, the reason I'm trying to think of it is because remember then towards the end after Sam's ripping the shit out of the guy and at one point the guy, you know, he's using the shotgun blowing all the pumpkin actually, guns out of him. Actually, no, the, uh, he, he went to the, the principal's house. The principal's, okay, because I, I was trying to, the, either way, the, the the little guy, I mean, Sam had to get him I and mean, this was the main guy to get for all the shit that he did in the past anyways, but then the guy finally like offers him some candy. And then he takes it, and then it's like he leaves like he was leaving him alone. And you see guy all bandaged up. But you knew there was a setup for something anyways. So then a little bit later, like, some kids come up to the door, and he's got all this candy. He's got, like, his arm in a sling, and he's giving kids candy and closes it. And then he hears the doorbell ring again. And, of course, there are all the kids that are that were dead that he killed. And so they, boom, got their revenge. And then, like you said, then it flipped back to kind of showing Sam how it started at the beginning, mm-hmm. where then he's – right across the street and he's looking and he's seeing that one couple you've seen where he's, they're like, oh, don't blow it out. You know, there's traditions, there's rules. So it's like, oh, okay, now we know why Sam went over and kind of like got them. But it kind of like did a double from the beginning yeah. to the end. Which, is, that's the, the beauty of this whole film is you you made an anthology movie that the stories intertwine. It's it's interesting and it's only 82 minutes long. So it's not it's not a super long film at all. And it's just a, a well-crafted story. You can kind of see, because the, the director of this, as we stated before, was like the writer of uh, X2 and did Superman Returns, which Superman Returns, not really a, a strong Superman film, but a lot of people have a fondness for X-Men 2. Uh, so it was nice to uh, see him not only step it up, but create something that is now finally getting some uh getting some love and it shows that you don't have to make a movie all the time like an hour and 40 minutes or two hours it's like how it was back in the day a lot of horror movies really used to only be almost like an hour and 20 to hour 30 minutes like max most of the time but it was just written and crafted well it it, like i said it was just it's not like some of those because some people who haven't seen it said oh is this gonna be like you know kind of those twilight zone and tales from the crypt and stuff where it was like three different parts and i was like no no this is actually it intertwines within itself. Unlike, I guess, some of the comics they did, they did a, only a couple or something where those actually had different stories for, you know, a trick or treat. But I think this, it's now become for me, uh, even though I've already watched it again just recently, I still watch it on Halloween. Yeah. I watch the original Halloween, and I'm talking about the original yeah, Halloween. Yeah. I watch that on Halloween. I watch Friday the 13th, part four, and I've added this to my tradition. I didn't think there would ever be a movie that I would add to something else and it shows that you know like how they say oh you're like a stuff from the past not really they did this movie damn great now this has become a halloween tradition is watching trick-or-treat if you haven't seen it you guys gotta see this movie it's, it's fantastic it's... i would love it if why couldn't they just release it for like you said a limited run one time around halloween for a weekend just put it in the theaters so we could actually experience it in the theaters for once and give them a little extra money i mean it, I it, it, yeah that would be nice if they were able to like because man most most things around here, the only thing that they do is uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I was like, come on, man. Our, we do, uh, our local drive-in is actually going to uh, play, what was it? Uh, Mary, Bloody Mary and Boogeyman. Like, two old-ass, like, Boogeyman's from, like, early 80s. And that, that movie is, like, from 1975. So, I, I'm like... It's cool. It's nice to see something that's not just Rocky Horror Picture Show over and over and over sure. again. Sure. But uh, no, th- yeah, this would be cool to, to play somewhere. And this has also turned into I watch this every October. Not necessarily, oh, on, you too? Yeah, not necessarily on Halloween, but at some point in the month of October, I always watch this movie. And up until last year, oh. Emily hadn't seen this movie. So that, that was nice. Oh, what did she think? Oh, of yeah, it? She, she liked it a lot. Cause I, I t- it's good. It just shows that you can still make a damn good movie. I mean, it's just it, it's sad that a lot of the horror movies they make nowadays just something ain't. It just doesn't click. I don't know well, what they're I, doing. I, if they're trying too hard, or it's it's trying too hard. It's the thing right now is it's got to be like paranormal and. Like, <sighs> Those just don't do it for me. Uh, just they yeah. never really held up. It's like no. eh, uh, there are so, there just, are a select few that do, but I just uh, like Annabelle and Conjuring. Like the first Conjuring was all right. The second one, not I didn't enjoy that that much. I haven't seen anything in past that universe. 
Uh, I haven't watched like Insidious or any of that stuff because there's just uh, not much of an appeal to me. Give me something. That's weird. You just said Insidious and I looked at myself on the screen. I think I almost look like that yeah. kind of red devil. Yeah. That's weird. Okay. But I, it, if it's not those, then they're just pushing out uh, remakes and things. And I'm, I'm just not much interest. Yeah, and I like the ones... You know, and this, like I said, this just works perfect. I mean, obviously, Trick or Treat, it's honoring the thing of Halloween. So it's a perfect Halloween movie. When you think of it, I mean, you don't get many of them. I mean, we have a lot of great horror movies when you think of the Friday the 13th series and Nightmare on Elm Street. And yes, Halloween is, yes, for Halloween. But you don't get many kind of good, really, Halloween movies that fit the bill. And this one was great. Uh, and I would love to hopefully see a sequel eventually happen. And if it does, stick to the formula they did. Because what was great is they didn't, like... This, like you said, around 2007 when it was supposed to come out, and I thought it even came out in 2009 because I thought there was a couple-year delay. But either way, it wasn't heavily technology-based. We didn't have to see somebody always on a, a cell phone or, or using you know anything like that. And they did have phones back then that were cell phones. But I feel like sometimes that kind of loses some of the appeal when they have this connection with all of reality. You didn't get any of that from any of these characters. So that's that's what I yeah, like, too. It just kind of stuck you in. And, you know? and that is kind of a hard part and a, a hurdle i think not just for the horror genre but for kind of anything now like if you put characters in certain situations like if they have you like you would normally think oh this person's always probably got their phone on them you have to think about it in a way well all right well how do we make sure that either their phone doesn't work or they run out of their the battery dies or they don't have a, a proper signal or something. So you always have to work around that. And then that, yeah, that kind of like takes you out. And maybe, right. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that at least for me that worked for trick or treat. And I don't know if it was intentional, but they never really, yes, you could see how they're addressed in certain ways for some things, but since it's Halloween, you never really felt like you were in a certain time period. Right. Like, of course, yes, I know this wasn't supposed to take place in the fifties or sixties, right. but they didn't give you the sense that this had to be 2009. This could have been 1992. It could have been 19. Hey, you know I, I what mean, I mean? you just... know, they, they did, uh, that couple did have a VCR in their room. So. Yeah. So I like that when it's like, you know, Hey, just a time period to where you're not really even thinking about right. it. Just you're, you get, you're getting so engrossed with a, you know, a well-written movie and story and you're just sucked into it that you forget about all that stuff. So. Let's hope if they make a sequel that it's just as good as the first one. Because uh, yeah, this well, is well, that's movie. that's what kind of worries me. You know, that's why I'm like maybe it is best to just leave it alone and not do. But I'm sure at some point they'll be like, oh, we got to make a sequel because if this thing starts to gain more traction and become even more popular, I I would I would see a sequel. The, well, the merchandise is definitely hot, so at least you know people are wanting all the types of merchandise, which, and hopefully we really get a good... I, yeah. uh, Aren't we getting a good Sam figure coming up from NECA yeah, soon there, or there's something? There's going to be two, actually. There's going to be one that is like your traditional like NECA figure, like the just the plastic all around, but they're also making one with where it's going to be like cloth, the costume. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. I, I plan on getting both of those, because I missed out the first time that Sam came out in a, uh, a, me too. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have got it. You know what? Like it pisses me off is thinking of this one company called soda toys yeah. back in the day that did like toxic yep. Avenger. And I remember them previewing that we're going to have the leprechaun come. And I was like, finally the leprechaun, we're going to have a leprechaun figure. And then they canceled before that run ever came out. Man, was I pissed. I, I was waiting for that. Do you remember when they advertised that in that one magazine showing that little leprechaun? It looked just like I don't, the movie. I don't remember leprechaun, but I remember that they were teasing yeah. a trimmer set as well. With like, oh, well, a, leprechaun like a was going to come. I was like, man, yeah, that would be awesome. And then nothing. I hate it when stuff gets yeah, canceled. The company went out, went under, and pff, there went that. But I have at least, you know, Toxic Avenger and a couple other things from them. But I, Man, oh. uh, I remember seeing that Sam at spencer's and i looked at it and i was like i, I, I i'll get this but i'll i'll wait and then it was gone when i went to go i bet he's a lot on ebay oh now. yeah yeah so i i'm looking forward to the ones that neko are putting out i can't wait to get those and have them on the shelf all right me too i'll i might have to actually save up some money and get them suckers. so uh so. i i'm gonna assume that star rating wise this is easily a five for you a five for me, and this is not intentional. Like these movies that we're picking, that we're not intentionally picking movies to give them all fives. But yeah, th this is a five. I love this movie. Highly recommended for Halloween or just any time you're in a mood for something scary. 
I'll uh, I guess I'll separate myself from Joe a little bit and I'll give it a four and a half. Okay. All right. It's perfect. Now we'll have to see what we're gonna do next week. Maybe it'll be a movie that could get a four or three. You know, we don't. It's not always gonna have to be ones that are super amazing. You know, to everybody. Ne- you know, next even ones week, we love. We don't always have to. Axum. No, I. I, I don't. I don't that, think. Yeah. Uh, no. Nope. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a tough sell. It's 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 so hor- I mean, it is so horrible. It's it's good though. It's just so. St- it, it, you can't. I mean, don't go into seeing Axum with any expectations that you're really gonna see a good movie. I think it it's just meant to be bad. I mean, it's like the budget of somebody like me just having probably a camcorder. It's that bad and edited, but it's just hilariously terrible. Nope. <laughs> I wouldn't give a five. I'm not giving a five for that, but it's just <laughs> hilariously terrible. So, oh, yeah. Uh, nope. Can't do it. I, I, I'll right. take a peek at the list, and you and I will talk, and we'll, we'll, fig- we'll figure right. something. Okay. All right. Well, so what you got to say for closing? Well, well I was going to say, uh, d- did you have any, 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 uh, customs that you're working on that you would want to talk about or share or, uh, well, I was finishing up, uh, another copycat for a customer and a couple other things, something that, uh, maybe tomorrow I'll try to post. And yeah, cause I was even, I couldn't get it done in time, but I was trying to make a vintage He-Man style crossover with Sam for this episode, but I couldn't get it done. So maybe it's something I'll show around Halloween time. But and speaking of a He-Man, uh, we'll have a, a little something to say tonight in case, uh, you watch our fans of power podcast. Also, it's going to have like a, not a gigantic return of a, a real episode episode, but it's still going to have some relevant stuff, but we'll discuss some things for those who yeah. catch that uh, podcast It'll as well. The, the information mini cast. I, it's not, it's not even going to yeah. be a, a proper thing. It's just going to be Joe and I talking about stuff and, uh, yeah, well, well, just to give people a little, uh, uh heads up on what's going on. So yeah, yeah. Heads up on what's going on, but, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when new videos are posted or if I ever go live for uh, video game streaming. Check out the links down below. You can download us on Podbean and find us on iTunes. Hit Joe up for a custom. Buy one of his t-shirts. And I guess I'll throw fans of power back down below there as well. If you're into He-Man and the Master Universe, check out that show. Check out all the things that have come before and uh, hopefully we got a little bit to throw out in the future. You can find that at youtube.com slash fans of power podcast. Perfect. Perfect. Like the video, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think of trick or treat, or if there are other horror anthology films that you enjoy. I know a lot of people are like creep shows. Okay. And some people just don't like creep show at all. Uh, that's it. Creep shows are good. Twilight Zone, the movie. I mean, there's there are still some great yeah, kind of twi- anthology ones. Uh, Tales from the, yeah, from the Dark Side. Tales from Dark Side. Even Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. Uh, uh, shit. Uh, yeah, there's there's still plenty of things. And there was that old TV series, Amazing Stories. I always loved that damn thing. I missed that TV show. But uh, yeah. So, but uh, yeah. As for the anthologies, yeah, all the ones you said are are great. Choices. I'm surprised they haven't brought Tales from the Crypt back yet. Yeah, Crypt Keeper needs to make a comeback. I, feel, I, I used to love I, that I, on yeah, Saturday nights. I feel nights. like that's going to happen. The The intro that used to scare me as a kid. Yeah, it was. And it worked perfect. It was that nighttime Saturday night, and that, yes, definitely was creepy. I missed the Crypt Yeah, Keeper. I couldn't. Like, after the intro, I was like, I can't watch it. And I knew it was, it, yeah, it was they, like the Jack in the Box. Like, you know it's going to pop out at the end of the song. Pops up. <laughs> and yet, every, yeah, every time. Yeah. Every time I'm like, oh, no. Uh, I'm scared to death. Then we start. Once he started talking to you, you felt comfortable when he called you boys and ghouls and all his other little puns. You felt comfortable, so uh, yeah. I did. I, I was a pansy as a right. But anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed, and until then, we will see you in the future to talk about the past. Take care, everybody.